Again, welcome everyone to today's webinar presented by HireEasy and the Outbound Recruiting Academy and community. Becoming an effective recruiter isn't about being born with a special set of skills. It's all, all about that development of strong habits and consistent strategies that result in quality hires. And sometimes that changes over time, whether you're a new recruiter or been in the recruiting industry for the last 20 years. Over the last couple of weeks, our team here spoke to expert recruiters about the habits that help them achieve recruitment success in our recent blog, Eight Habits of an Effective Recruiter. And we realized that we want to bring those insights directly to you guys in this new webinars, webinar series. So I'm so excited for the raw, unfiltered truths about what it means to be an effective recruiter and learn some new strategies that can elevate all of our career. Um, and when you're sitting and listening, here are some questions to really ask yourself and listen to this webinar. I want you to be engaging. I want you to ask questions and really dive into some of these habits and misconceptions of the recruiting industry, because we're the ones to protect and grow what recruiting is going to be in the future. And the first habit that we're going to talk to this webinar is being a sponge. What that really means and whether you're new into the industry or switching industries, like most of us, maybe you just got laid off and you're switching a new industry, a new company. And being a sponge, what that actually means and how do you set yourself up for success? When you're listening to Leticia and some of the things that she's going to be explaining, I really want you to think, am I practicing this habit or just going through the motions? And what's really holding me back? And how can you elevate your career? what tools, what resources can really help me level up. Um, so I'm super excited. We're thrilled to have you join us, uh, Leticia. Leticia is a senior recruiting manager at Frederick Fox. Um, she brings a wealth of experience and passion for the search and recruitment industry. With a strong background in big tech and recent transitions back to agency side, she has a ton of experience to from both clients and candidate side. Um, at Frederick Fox, she plays a pivotal role in delivering exceptional results for her clients and leveraging some of these different tools, resources, and mythology to really increase her um, clientele. Before Frederick Fox, she was at VMware, Amazon Web Services, and built teams there. So welcome to the webinar, Leticia. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me, Dan. In this industry, uh, we talked to a ton of recruiters and most will tell you that they never planned on becoming a recruiter. They just kind of fell into it. In the the people that attended this webinar, put in the chat room, is that your story? Did you just fall into recruiting? Some colleges and universities may have started, you know, maybe the HR related degree plans, but many of us, even veterans in this industry just fell into it. What were the reasons why you started in this industry and what kept you there? Well, I, I fell into, I fell into recruiting. <laughs> um, okay. I was actually selling ads at the local paper, uh, employment ads. And then my manager, um, he had a background in staffing and went back to a staffing agency. And I actually tried to sell him some of our ad products. I was trying to sell him some Google ads we were offering. Um, and he really switched it on me and sold me on coming to work for him and staffing. Um, so that's how I got into recruiting. I always thought I would go straight to the sales side, but like a lot of recruiting agencies where I landed, you know, they wanted you to do at least 90 days in a recruiting desk before meeting with clients. And honestly, I just loved the recruiting side of the business. Um, I really liked how it's prospecting, but it's very personal. It's almost like a B2B, but also B2C type, type sales role. Um, and I just really enjoyed it. So I've, I've stayed in the recruiter seat ever since. Um, and yeah, definitely fell into it. But I think what's kept me in recruiting is it's different every day. Um, it's fun. I really enjoy internet searching. I've always been the person of all my friends who are like, if you're dating someone new, I'm going to know their criminal history, like where they live, <laughs> who they've dated in the past. Um, so I just really enjoy the search part as well. I think I'm a naturally nosy person. Um, and so this has been a good career um, for me that way. So the misconception sometimes because we don't have a specific degree or a career path early on and people fall into recruiting, 
the misconception is anybody can do this job. Walk me through what you're hearing, you're seeing, and how that has impacted the recruiting community and maybe your career that have hiring managers think anybody can do this job. I mean, I think there there are definitely a lot of people that can do this job if they have the right attitude, aptitude, and are willing to work hard. Um, but, you know, as I had mentioned, I started in an agency, and I think for those of us who also started in agencies, we've probably seen a lot of turnover with those new green recruiters, especially if you're in a bigger shop where they're hiring entry-level grads, um, because a lot of people realize, like, there's a lot of rejection in recruiting, especially on the sourcing side. Um, while it's super fun to find people, new opportunities that are great for them, like we are people connecting people to other people. So there's a whole lot of people in that equation that can say no. Um, so I think the industry has a lot of turnover um, and really also, you know, a lot of people get out of recruiting, um, especially right now as we're seeing the market kind of change. People are getting laid off. Many people that I know have personally decided to go back to school for more technical topics, kind of change their career path, see it as a way to kind of make a pivot. Um, but then there's those of us who are like, I evaluate everything I could do, and, and this is what I like doing. This is what I'm good at. And there's also a lot of money to be made. Um, you know, I recently pivoted back to the agency side after being internal. And I think what's exciting about agency recruiting for me is that there's really a lot of opportunity um, from a compensation and commission standpoint, um, because it is really hard to hire. Um, so to hiring managers who think anyone can be a recruiter, it's like potentially, <laughs> if they're willing to make the dials, find the right people, um, listen. But I would say you probably want to find someone with a track record of success, um, you know, before making that partnership. You've seen success in your career. You started an agency, you went to big tech, then you're back into the agency world. Can you share maybe your examples of how being a sponge and absorbing information about roles, expectations with your hiring manager, market trends that led you to be successful in each specific place that you started? Because I think there's a lot of people um, within our recruiting industry right now that are either starting a new role, um, starting a new company, um, and they're kind of starting over and getting back to the mm -hmm. basics of absorbing all that information and being kind of a, a talent advisor. Yeah, absolutely. I think externally, you know, it's about doing some homework before you start diving into a wreck and doing the Googling, you know, right now with the AI tools like Perplexity and ChatGPT, we have so much information that we can easily find and we can ask those tools like, hey, who are the competitive companies in this industry? What are the alternative titles in this industry? Like we can do a lot of that homework now with the with the use of AI, which makes it so much faster. And then of course, as the human, we have to be like reading that information and making sure it makes sense. Um, but I think you can be a sponge in all areas of recruiting. So like when I was internal at VMware, you know, one of the, I think the biggest pros of being internal is you get to build really strong relationships with your hiring managers and teams. And so when I was hiring for a new team that was specifically um, our service provider and edge business unit, we started hiring for these roles on an edge innovation team. This technology was completely over <laughs> my head. I had no idea. So, you know, you start by reading the job description, Googling everything you don't understand. I was reading some internal articles on what the team was working on and then came to that intake meeting you know, with a talent insights report, um, with some potential profiles, but more so with just questions about like, what's the technology that you're building? Like what makes someone successful? And also like, what's exciting about this role? And then I always ask my hiring managers, like, are you open for me recording this call just so I can take those word tracks and then use those word tracks in my messaging to, you know, reach out to prospect candidates. Um, and then, of course, use those same word tracks when you're talking to candidates to get it excited, but then also being a sponge when you're talking to candidates, like, why do you think you'd be a good job, re like a good candidate for this job, right? Or, hey, what about this job is maybe not for you? Um, and then listening and, and just kind of absorbing everything. Every time you're looking at a LinkedIn profile, it's like you're going to see like the same words come up. If you're searching one keyword, you're going to start seeing other keywords consistently come up, and then you can use those keywords in your search string and just kind of always like leaning into to listening and kind of gaining that information as it happens. And then 
making sure that you're calibrating with your hiring manager or your client saying like, are we hitting the mark here? Um, but for me, like to be able to hire for that team, doing that kind of edge technology when I had no clue and hearing all about the cool projects, it was just super awesome to actually be able to find those very small group of people <laughs> that we could attract and attract them. With technology at the, the hands of our fingertips, I think you hit home on a really good strategy that I want to share with the audience of in your intake meeting, being prepared on the front end of doing your research and giving ideas going into that hiring manager intake call. But also when you ask them, hey, can I record this session? Typically you're gonna have a transcript based on the conversation that you had with your hiring manager. And what you can do is download that transcript. You can throw that in a chat GPT or an AI or whatever you're utilizing, and then say, give me a summary of our conversation on an ideal candidate, what this hiring manager is looking for. And then you can take that information and doing some Boolean strings, x-ray searches, whatever it may be, because the hiring manager said that. Mm -hmm. And then I think the biggest thing too is during your follow-up meetings and you're presenting candidates later on in the stages, if the hiring manager says no about a certain thing, go back to that transcript and see what they actually said of what they're looking for and use the data that they previous said in order to have the narrative that the candidate would be a really good fit because it was their words, not your words. Absolutely. Yeah. I always like to try and get like target companies too. And then it's like, Hey, I found you four people from your target company with your target uh, title. You know, what's missing here? Where do we need to change the search? For sure. Um, I think within this industry is it's confidence level and really good recruiters are finally confident in maybe pushing back to the recruiting managers or the hiring managers that you're working with based on data. You've worked at big, large, big tech companies that teach you to deliver data-driven decisions and deliver data-driven um, you know, information to those hiring leaders. Walk us through how you get some of that data um, in order to be kind of that talent advisor versus an order taker. Yeah, absolutely. So I think specifically at VMware, we always went into every intake meeting and every touch point meeting with data. So we used LinkedIn talent insights as well as seek out insights um, to pull the reports on like, hey, what does this talent market look like when we're coming in to talk with hiring managers? Um, this was especially important, especially around like DEI goals. If you're actively trying to meet, you know, an interview slate for candidate representation to be able to show hiring managers on the front end, hey, this is what we believe the talent pool may look like in terms of number of candidates. And then also what percentage of those candidates are diverse. Um, so then the hiring manager can have more buy-in with what your sourcing strategy is. Like, obviously we're going to start with active, we're going to advertise the role, and then we're going to go out and to actively source and try to reach out to candidates. Um, but if it's a very small pool and then we're trying to meet uh, diversity slate requirements, for instance, it might be easier to get buy-in from that hiring manager for them to be involved in the messaging if we're showing them up front, this is the data. Um, and then if we show them up front, this is the data and we're not able to you know, meet the goals of the rec, we at least have the data, <laughs> the data hasn't changed. Um, and we can say, hey, we didn't meet that goal, but here's what the talent pool looked like. So maybe we need to change the search, change our um, you know, ideas based on that data and just kind of keep iterating and keep a good record as well of what you're doing. I also think one part that is important um, in kind of pushing back is being transparent about what you've done on the search. So keeping notes of what kind of searches you're running, where you're running those searches, how many people you're reaching out to, what kind of response rate you're getting um, so that they can really understand like what's the market saying. Maybe we need to change messaging. Maybe we need a new person to reach out to, or maybe we just need to expand the source, like the searching. Um, but also having that accurate detailed record and transparency with your clients they can then give you more ideas and help you fill the role. For sure. I'll share my screen. I think there's one really, really cool thing that um, that Hire Easy has uh, that, that kind of separates people from, from the rest. Um, they have that 
by your easy insights. But for example, let's just say I know you worked at AWS. If I type in a specific company that maybe the higher manager says, hey, yeah, um, you know, we, we like people from Amazon or you work at Amazon and you want to kind of see the landscape of it. Amazon, this gives you kind of like a GitHub feel uh, in returning, recruiting terms uh, for the for the specific company. And, and the cool thing is it has kind of real time of where people are coming from for like a software engineer role that I put in. Um, we gained people 318, Amazon lost 199 people. The, it shows you where your kind of targets on where you are hiring from, from a, a trend standpoint. And what you can do is you can go in, okay, uh, people are, are leaving and going to Meta. Why are they leaving from Amazon to Meta? And you can kind of be a talent advisor for those specific people. Um, so it, it really gives you kind of the talent moves of where people are at. And then also diversity. You hit on home on, on diversity and being kind of a, a talent partner that extends just from beyond filling racks. And it kind of gives you the diversity numbers um, based on, you know, diversity distribution. So wanted to share that. Uh, that is something that you hit home on of being a talent advisor, using the data to really make an impact with those hiring leaders, which yeah. is fantastic. Those tools can also help you like to kind of share with a hiring manager if what they're looking for is unrealistic. So for instance, we were looking for Java engineers and I had a hiring manager who really wanted to hire people out of Meta. And we were able to show them with reports like, hey, A, Meta doesn't actually use a Java-based tech stack. So maybe that's not the right company, but also B, like, we're actually losing people to Meta and not necessarily gaining talent from Meta. So we, we may not be able to meet that requirement. Like here are some companies that do have Java-based tech stacks. Should we look at them? And I think that data is really helpful if you kind of have that. For sure. Pivoting outside of kind of a bigger, large enterprise company. Now you're on your own and you're yeah. developing those relationships with different companies, the hiring managers and gaining business on the agency side. What would you say being a sponge looks like that in pivoting from a corporation to being on your own? Well, I think instead of just focusing on like, I've got to fill this job for this hiring manager, you've got so many more opportunities that you're looking at. So every person you talk to, they could, they could be a, a hiring manager one day, but they also can give you leads about the market. So not only listening to like their experience, how it relates to that specific job, but really trying to like absorb like, hey, where are you interviewing at? Like, what other companies have you been talking to? Like, what other agencies are you using? Like, where are they sending you to? And kind of going back to that, like, old school, larger, you know, broader mentality of understanding the entire market. Um, and I think also helping them in a different way. Like one of the fun parts about being in the agency side is that, you know, I don't have to represent just one company. Um, and I can also like tell candidates, honestly, like, you know, tips on their resume, like, Hey, maybe this will help you get more interviews. Whereas when you're corporate, you know, you don't really want to like gray area any hiring manager you don't really want to like push a candidate in you want them to make their own decisions so agency recruiting i think is really fun because you can kind of tell candidates like hey like you should really be putting all of these things that you just told me like you should put them on your resume like you're using these different systems they're not on your resume like go ahead and put them there it's going to help you get more uh, more interviews and help you get further in that job search so i feel like I can not only be a sponge and like learn more from candidates about like the general market, but also really kind of add value in different ways. Whereas as a corporate recruiter, I think in some ways it's more transactional. Um, and then also like, you're really just filling one job for one hiring manager and kind of moving on. At least that was the environments I was in. Got it. What would, what's one advice that you would tell somebody that's switching over to agency and maybe the, the misconception of, oh, I've heard a lot. I'm, I will never go back to agency. And a lot of those folks that I talk to are back in agency right now and, and doing really, really well. What would you tell those individuals that are pivoting back into agency? I would say like, I think for me, it's been so much more fun than I expected. Um, and so just to like have fun, focus on good habits, activity, 
Um, and also focus on like what the benefit that you can bring is. Um, and of course, the compensation aspect. I think if you're going back into an agency setting, you probably have to get out of the like nine to five mindset and be more focused on like producing results um, to be successful. Um, and then just be like open to the opportunity. I think working in corporate, you know, especially for such large companies, there is a lot of like big brand name and a lot of prestige there. Um, and in some ways it felt like I was taking maybe a step backwards, but now I really see it as a step forwards. I think I can increase my income, which at the end of the day, that's why I go to work. Um, but also I feel like I can make a really big impact for my clients and candidates across the board. Um, and it has been super fun. So I would say um, definitely like focus on <laughs> productivity um, learn where you can get as many leads as you can and make sure people know what you're doing. Um, but then also, I think the other part of it is just choose the agency that you're working for carefully and make sure that you're working with the right partners and in an environment you want to be in. Um, I know for me, there's a lot of different types of agencies and I really wanted to join one that I, I vibed with and had the right values. And that's what I think I found here. Um, so I'm excited to grow. Pivoting back to agency there's might be since the last time you were in the agency world things have changed what has yeah. changed dramatically since last time you were in the agency world i think everything has changed i will be honest i think the amount of technology that we're using on the agency side is well above anything i saw previously um you know we're using automation tools and um AI tools. One of the coolest things I think about being able to be in an agency is you don't have those corporate regulations that you have in large companies. When we were at um, the Minnesota Recruiters Conference in spring, a lot of people I was talking to at the breaks about AI, they weren't able to use AI in their large corporations. And I think one of the really big benefits of being in an agency, especially like a smaller kind of environment, is you're just able to use different technologies faster. You could try things out. If it doesn't work out, you know, you didn't have to go through all of those hoops. So a huge thing has just been the amount of tools that we're using and how many tools like I didn't even knew existed <laughs> because it is definitely, um, you know, you've got to have speed, uh, right? You've got to find clients and you've got to deliver for them quickly. What would you say, whether it's a corporate side or the agency side of someone starting their career, maybe they've been in the career, maybe it's their first job within the first 90 days, what recommendations or advice would you give them based on working for a corporate and agency mm -hmm. side? Let's go both because you've done it both in the last couple of yeah. years. I think in both environments, you want to find some people that are doing really well um, and connect with them and try to learn what's working for them um, and kind of build those relationships, not like a formal mentor, but so that you understand like what's working for them. How are they being successful in those different environments? From a corporate perspective, I think you definitely have to understand what you're being evaluated on and what makes the most sense. There's a lot of different projects that you can find yourself pulled into in corporate, but at the end of the day, you really need to make sure that you're focused on those business outcomes that are affecting the bottom line and that are affecting like your business unit. So understand those, work towards those, and really try to keep the distractions at bay until you have more bandwidth and time and you're ramped up. Um, and then from an agency setting, I think really qualify the roles that you're working on, be curious, build relationships internally, try to get as much attention internally and externally as you can. Um, and then just try to find what works and pick up the phone. That's what I would say. Picking up the phone. Uh, I, I'm going to throw it in the chat too. Uh, we have, you know, a couple more minutes, but throw any questions for Leticia that you have uh, right now, we can get to a couple. Um, but last question I have with technology, where are you seeing the most successful reach outs happening? Is it email? Is it calls? Is it social media? Is it LinkedIn emails? Where are you seeing and how many touch points are you having to have with candidates before that reply? So I'm seeing the most success where I'm leaving a voicemail for a candidate and then sending them a connection request on LinkedIn. Um, and then getting getting responses that way, um, or sending and you know leaving a voicemail, sending an email. Um, but I send drip campaigns with typically three touch points, uh, as well as 
uh, connection requests, and then I try to hit them with a phone call and a text message. Um, depending on the search, depends on how long you have to keep going until you find someone, but I typically find someone, you know, within that first kind of call outreach along with the emails and connection requests. Awesome. Um, I know we're coming up on time. Where do you go for education and getting you better to be a better recruiter? Um, you know, I know we offer here at a higher easy help on recruiting Academy conferences, webinars, how much time do you set per month per day that really focuses on you to be better? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think it's like really important to kind of stay consistent up with the trends. I definitely listen to the higher easy um, webinars and attend some of those community office hours. And then I'm a big fan of SourceCon. I went to the conference a few months ago or years ago now, but um, I like to do their virtual webinars. YouTube is great. Um, and one of the best things I think about the remote world post COVID is like, you can go to so many things online. So I know Sourcing7 had a few months ago at, at when I attended. Um, so I just try to keep up with people that I think are really successful in the industry on LinkedIn. And then you know, check out some of those virtual events that they have, have them going in the background, like while doing some sourcing. Love it. Before we wrap up, maybe top three people that you follow on social media for the audience to, as well as follow that, you know, really has made an impact on your career. Um, I would say this year, probably Ben Mina and his podcast um, has been the most impactful, especially set getting back into the agency world. Um, Dan, you put me on the spot. I follow you. <laughs> well, that's a good one. Um, Ben's a really good, I think, if you're in the agency, if anybody's on the call, he has a podcast called the Elite Recruiter Podcast. I think he, he's done um, pretty good things within this recruiting com community. But we really wanted to, there's people out there that have a ton of wide range of experiences and expertise. And I first want to say thank you so much for Letitia to coming on and kind of sharing your experiences. Um, how can the audience find you? Um, what I can do is I can put the, your LinkedIn profile in there, your contact information. And so if you have any other further questions for Leticia, if you need an expert in this field um, from an agency standpoint, she's the best in the business. So uh, feel free to reach out to her. Uh, but any last closing moments for the, for the audience? Well, thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Uh, like I said, I put in the PDF for everyone. Download that. has a lot of information on what's happening here at Hire Easy this month. Uh, feel free to sign up for that RecruitCon August 20th through the 22nd. And um, otherwise, we'll see you next week um, for another habit of uh, being an effective recruiter. So thanks again, everyone. Mm -hmm.